Thanks for listening to Middle Aged and Mediocre. I'm Cash. I'm Joel. And uh, we are a podcast about all things strange and unusual, death and UFOs, and other creepy, Cults. weird, random shows. There you go. Yeah. No, uh, I'm just naming things in the room. Welcome back to Middle Age and Mediocre. I'm Joel, and uh, I'm here with producer extraordinaire Cash and co-host. You have a lot of hats. Take all those hats off. <laughs> what a weird choo-choo. Because <laughs> the trains left the station and I'm oh, driving, baby. Okay, you're the conductor today. Yeah, this is a this is a special episode. That's right. Uh, this is a request. This episode is by special request. Yep, by uh, my 12 year old daughter Lily. Yeah. She wanted me to do a podcast, wanted us to do a podcast about uh, a movie, so I told her we'd do it as a real crime, right? which is uh, spelled R-E-E-L. That's right. Words that sound the same <laughs> mean two different things if we spell different. What? English language. Talk about Crazy. that on the playground. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to be a PG-13 episode, so Lily can hear it. Yeah. You know, even though show. she's 12, she's almost 13, but we're going to be... We'll keep it, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think it's parental guidance. Is it parental guidance like up to 13 or after yeah, 13? Yeah, I think it's up to or 13. Or for just maybe. 13. Well, yeah, we just, we won't say anything that, like, <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll be, just, we'll be, we'll, we'll be, be good boys. We're yeah. good boys anyway. Family show. This is a family GBX. show. GBX. Yeah. This is like GBX heavy. Good boys right. extraordinaire. That's right. Yeah. We're proving that we can do it. We can do it. Oh, definitely. This will be the first time I've ever. Uploaded the episode and not had to mark like explicit. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're not there yet. Well, are you, do you have the ability to? Be, I have to years bleep over bleep over. I do. You? Okay, good. But I have years of experience for wrestling shows. Uh huh. Family show. That's all you have to say to me. So I'm gonna cuss right now, and you're gonna be able to bleep it out. Uh, don't make me do work. I can. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I don't want to though. Why would you do that? All right, I won't do it. I'll wait. I'm gonna do it sometime <laughs> in the episode. You're gonna have okay. to bleep me. All right. <laughs> You, you go ahead and bleep me, Josh. Oh, oh, I'm feeling like I'm going to bleep you a lot. <laughs> no, I'll be good. Whether you like it or not. GBX. So, we do have a real crime today. Uh-huh. Uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these. Yeah. I think the last one was P- P2. Yeah, maybe. That's Probably about that was right. the last real crime. Yeah. Would you guys can go back and check that out? Well, yeah, some of you guys. Uh, if you haven't listened to a real if crime you're, yet, if you're if you're a, if you're a child listening, don't then listen don't. To, yeah, wait you a couple. Probably, years. You really shouldn't. No, <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if there's any episode I would recommend no, children could no. listen to. They have to wait till they're middle aged. Yeah. yeah, whether you're mediocre or not, yeah. you can still listen. Yeah, but yeah, because Lily's already like way skyrocketed past mediocre. Yeah, I'm gonna cough. Okay, <coughs> we're cool. back. Don't smoke cigarettes, kids. Yeah, <laughs> that was even from cigarettes. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I we won't give away the movie. Yet. Yeah, yeah, we'll just they'll know pretty quickly. Probably yeah. once you say a name. Yeah, we but, just won't uh, say the, the title of it. Yeah, we're going into it. Real crime It's where we do a. It's like a a true crime podcast, but we do it to a movie and we just tell the story of a movie. Yeah, that's a real crime. Hence the R E E L. Yeah, like a reel of film. <laughs> That's, that's why we call it that. Best idea ever. It's, it's, <laughs> now that I have all the VHS tapes, I was like, I think I'm gonna do more real crimes. Yeah, I really like them. You just start like blind, like close your eyes. Yeah, pick one. But I know where everything is. That's true. You so. can like spin me around and like do whatever you want to. We me. can tr- we can test it, and I'll just, you can point me at one. And I'll be like, that's probably I'll know within like five movies what it is. Probably. Yeah, I stare at those movies a lot. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Well, yeah, I do think we should uh, start doing some more real crimes. Cool. They're always fun. So, you want to get into this one? Yeah. All right. You ready to go? Yeah. I have a lot of notes. This is uh, this is about the haunting of Coraline Jones. Okay. It's about an 11 year old girl in 2002. Coraline Jones. I'll just go down the list of the people involved in the story. All right. Uh, it's uh, Coraline, her mo- her mom uh, Mel, her dad Charlie. And they have some neighbors here soon, uh, April Spink and Miriam Forcible. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Ser- Sergey, is that what we said? Sergey. Sergey Alexander Babinski. Sergey. 
Uh, there's a there's a little boy named YB. YB and yep. YB's grandmother. Who, it stands uh, for Wyborn. Wyborn. I was gonna get into that. Oh, okay. All right. Whatever. Who's in charge here? I guess you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is kind of a true crime and ghost story. Yeah. A little so bit. we haven't had a ghost there's story. Not, in a while. There's not a lot of crime in this. Well, there is, but yeah, in it's way. done by ghosts. Right. Yeah. Or the paranormal. I don't. There's a dark ghost. We'll get into it. Yeah. Yeah, so this happens in 2002. Coraline moves uh, with her parents from Pontiac, Michigan to Ashland, Oregon. And they move into the Pink Palace Apartments. Nice house. It's That's a lot to say, the Pink Palace Apartments. Yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's a, well, actually, it's a rather rundown Victorian house. But it's nice because it's big. It's worth it as apartments. Yeah, they boarded it up, made it into three apartments. Uh, apartment A, Apartment B. And apartment C. It's an easy way to remember. Yeah, three of them. Yeah. I'd get one, two, three. You would live in apartment C. Yeah. Because of my hat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your hat has a C on it. Good one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get back to the story now? If you want to. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're surrounded by the forest and the fog because it's Oregon. Yeah. So there's just, you know, not the best weather. Wow. And it was uh, the first day there exploring the area that Coraline... Uh, runs into a black cat. Mm-hmm. She was looking for a well. She had a. Uh, she took a stick off a bush and tried to make a. What do they call it? Not a ramrod. A. Uh, uh, you were close. A, was, uh, uh, but she's like trying to find water with this stick, and she's just kind of exploring the area. And she runs to into a black cat, and then she runs into like this little psycho kid on a bicycle, and that's YB. He has a cool. Like skull helmet, yeah, yeah, he's I, a little intimidating. At I first, dig a skull helmet, but his name is YB, his real name is Yborn, mm-hmm. which is just, hey, you got into that, huh? You said you were gonna get into that. Uh, that's me getting into it, yeah, you got it, good job, you did it. <laughs> so that's and uh, Levat, and like I said, he was the grandson of the uh, the landlord of the Pink Panther, Pink Panther, Pink, Pink Palace, Pink, Apartments. Pink Palace. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, so they that's Nimrod. How, that a what? A Nimrod. Are you calling me a Nimrod? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and geez. the thing that she was okay, holding. Nimrod. A yeah. Nimrod. <laughs> okay, so what? Uh, and then YB, they met Coraline, and uh, while they were talking, YB said he was surprised that his grandmother let Coraline's family move in because normally she doesn't like to have kids in the in the apartments. Because you know, so, you know, he, those darn kids. Yeah, and he's not even allowed in there. Right. I mean, why born? Well, he does wear... I feel like they hated this kid right away. He does wear a skull mask, so he's, you know, yeah, he'd be but, scaring people. But he's a smart kid, because then he told uh, Coraline that she was actually holding poison oak. Yeah. So, uh, don't do that. Which you're not supposed to do. No, it's very... It's, We're it's, not trained doctors, <laughs> but you should listen to us on this one. Yeah, don't 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 mess with poison oak. Unless you're not allergic to it. Can you be that? Like, I can't get... Like, well, we're not doctors, so Like, poison we ivy doesn't do anything to me. Really? Yeah, I can... If I look at it, I get it. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can... Wow. Like, I could, like, use it as a blanket. I don't know how I would, but I could use it as a blanket. <laughs> and I'd be fine. You wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah. Brag. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, stuff... It's my mutant ability. <laughs> the first night there, of course, she was stuck inside because of the rain. And uh, Coraline was trying to get attention from her parents, but they were both busy wor- uh, writing pieces for a gardening catalog. Mm-hmm. Which Caroline found uh, wildly ironic since her parents hated handling dirt. Uh, her mother gives Caroline a doll that looks exactly like her. No, wait, who'd you say gave it to her? Caroline's mother. Uh-huh. Well, because YB left it on oh, the porch. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm just trying to get the facts. Straight. Yeah, so why YB left it on the porch with the note explaining that he found the doll in his grandmother's trunk. Which you did, that's probably like a trunk in the attic, not like the trunk of her car. So I was like, why is Grandma driving around with dolls in her car? Well, but you know, probably... I also felt like it was a little odd that, like, there was a lack of reaction to the fact that um, this, like, she had just met, Coraline had just met YB. Yeah. And there was a very huge lack of reaction to YB left you a doll that looks just like you. Maybe she's shell-shocked from the move. Maybe. You know, she's out of reaction, buddy. Right. It happens. I've moved a lot. <laughs> he thought Brag. Caroline would like it. It was a welcoming gift. You know, he thought Caroline would like it since it looked just like her. Then Caroline takes the doll and uh, goes to find her father, mm-hmm. who is also hard at work. And uh, he tells his daughter to uh, go explore the house, write down the number of windows and doors. Yes, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> 
Fun stuff like that. That's what I wrote. And it's an apartment, so it's going to take you like you know a minute. So Carol, but Caroline did it. She explores the house and uh, she counts all the windows. When she was done, she went to uh, get her doll off the table in the drawing room, and the doll was gone. Dun dun dun. And then Coraline found the doll moved itself beneath the mattress, leaning against the wall. You know, no one else is there. Her parents are both working. Right. And, you know. So then when she moved the mattress, Coraline finds that there's like a small door that's been covered up with wallpaper. And then Coraline notes a keyhole in the door and asks her mom to help her find the key. And they find the key. You know, her mom made a deal. If you, I'll help you find the key if you leave me alone. Yeah. Just, you know, super cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they, but they did. They cut around the door. Wasn't work like was not uh, presented well. <laughs> yeah, it was presented in a very exhausted. Hey, parents get time. stressed out, you know. Uh, Moving we'll, work. We'll get into that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they do. They they go and they they peel away the wallpaper and insert the key, and then they open up the door and there's just like a brick wall behind yeah. it. And then Coraline's mom says, "Well, that makes sense since they divided up the house. They probably, you know, covered up this wall." So they all went to bed. Aren't, and that, you, a, aren't you a genius mom? Yeah. Go back to your gardening magazine. <laughs> that night, Coraline is awoken by a squeaking mouse in her room. I'm going to start calling her CJ. How about that? Okay. All right. CJ goes, <laughs> gets out of bed and follows for Coraline Jones. Oh. Yeah. Okay. He's like, yeah. I thought you were, I, th- <laughs> I thought you just didn't know how squeaky mouse was spelled. Oh, no. Okay. I don't. So, CJ. Yeah, that's what I'm going to start calling Coraline. (laughs) So, he gets out of bed and follows the mouse to the drawing room where the mouse uh, disappears behind the small door. The drawing room? Yes, the drawing room. Uh, The mouse disappears, and when Coraline opens the door, now there's a, instead of the brick wall, it's replaced by a wide and colorful passage. That's some Roadrunner stuff That's right some there. craziness. Yeah. That's, that's what, like got to be polar, Poltergeist, maybe? That's what Wile E. Coyote used to do. To like, the, yeah. Or the Roadrunner used to do the Wile E. Coyote. Interdimensional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Caroline, of course, uh, crawls through the passage. Well, yeah. I mean, what else are you going to do? There's a passage that She could not go and avoid all this. But, but she's like, I'm going to crawl through that. So she comes out on the other side back in the drawing room that she just crawled out of. However, now the like everything's much more colorful and brighter, and she goes exploring and she finds her mother in the kitchen cooking, mm-hmm. which is not much like her mother. If no. you knew her mother, her mom. I think they'd already talked about her mom does not do the cooking. Yeah, her dad does. Yeah, and he doesn't do very good that much. No. So when her mother turns, the Greek Caroline, uh, CJ, CJ immediately notices the black buttons covering her mother's eyes. I don't think those were there before. She was a little shocked. She had eyes before. Yeah, not so, button eyes. Not buttons. And then, uh, the until it's explained by the woman that she is CJ's other mother, and that yeah. everybody has everybody one. has other mothers. Yeah, so other mother. What she says the other mother asked her to go fetch her other father from his study. And CJ agrees to do this for other mother because, you know, she wants to make a good first impression. Only the other mother. Yes. And uh, <laughs> CJ finds her other father looking, uh, he's having fun in the in the study just playing the piano. Yeah. Yeah, but the piano is like, there's like arms growing out of the piano and they're kind of playing itself. It's a cool piano. I mean, he's part of it. He's there. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. But he's got buttons for eyes. So. Yeah, he's got button for eyes too. And uh, he grabs the the yeah the piano play grabs the father's hands and plays the piano and he sung he did cool sing piano. yeah he did sing he did a song for Caroline and uh, after that he smiles all the way th- uh, Caroline's just really happy mm-hmm. you know she smiles you, all through you've dinner. already left your CJ see I, I'm all over the place <laughs> I'm all over the place you know that <laughs> the world food is uh, delightful and it's served with flair. And it's a complete 180 from what CJ had in her normal night life. Mm-hmm. And also uh, discovers that her other parents are way more fun than her real parents. They actually enjoy mud and explain that it's natural. It's, na- it's uh, nature's remedy for poison oak. I've heard that. That's what the other mother and father said. Just, after, rubs, just rub some dirt on it. After dinner, other mother are um, oh, oh, um, I like that. Okay. <laughs> well, she wants to play a game with uh, CJ. But uh, CJ's like, oh, I'm pretty tired, so I think I'm just going to go to bed. Go back- Boring. <laughs> Try to go back home. So uh, then 
she goes back into her other room. Coraline can't believe the like the differences. Yeah. You know, like the other place is just really doom and gloom, you know, and they just moved or in. Or like real home. Yeah, a real home. Yeah. This place is like, uh, there's covered color streamers, there's toys that spoke to her, and like the picture of her friends, her friends were alive in the picture. But they had button eyes. Pretty crazy that she would like, just be like, you know what, I'm actually going to go to bed now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to look at this piano. I'm, like, well, I'm a- going to play that piano. When I was a kid, if that would have happened. I, I would have fell victim to what was going on uh, because I would have never left. Yeah, let's was, play the game. What's yeah, this? Like, everything's alive. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, but but then uh, the other mother comes in and she puts mud on I Coraline's. Think, um, um, she puts mud on CJ's poison oak and CJ quickly falls asleep. It must be sleepy mud. Yeah. <laughs> and when she wakes up, she finds herself back in her normal room. And she's a little disappointed, but she smiles when she realizes the poison oak is gone. The mud worked. Yeah, it's like on Freddy Krueger where you would get slashed in a dream and wake up and be slashed. Yeah. Cause it's they, like... Because Freddy would just put it's some It's the mud opposite on it. of that, because they knew the dream was real and, like, Freddy was out to get him. Yeah. But in this, it's like... It was, she thought she dreamed it, but her poison oak was gone. So... Maybe not the a dream. The story is, rub some dirt on it. <laughs> rub some dirt on it. That's good. <laughs> I, I heard that while I was a kid. I did too. And uh, she ran out and to go check the door and it was bricked over again. Yeah. And at breakfast, uh, CJ tried to tell her parents about the other world. Uh, but other mother and other father or Ohm and Av. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they dismiss it as a vivid dream mm-hmm. and tell her to go tell it to the dingbats living down below. Which, uh, Which is were, rude to yeah, say. Yeah, why would you call them that? Which, of course, the ones below I talked about at the beginning were a couple of retired burlesque dancers, April Spink and Merriman Forcible. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had a bunch of Scotty dogs. Yes. Some yeah. some dead. And they do a, a very, like, they sew, they sew little angel wings for them. Yeah, after they die. Yeah. And they fit them while they're still alive. Yeah. And they, they like to stuff them, put them on the wall. A little weird. <laughs> a little weird. <laughs> But uh, as Caroline goes out to go downstairs, she trips over a big stack of mail for the upstairs neighbor, mm-hmm. uh, which is Sergei Alexander Babinski. Sergei. 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 He got killed by John Wick. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's every other Russian bad guy. This guy, I don't think he was a bad guy, though. But uh, yeah, let's get back to Okay, so he was uh, burp, 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 burp. the amazing Babinski. He's a, uh, he's a acrobatic Russian. Uh, and he had kind of a blue skin, which Coraline thought was from the Chernobyl cleanup. Because yeah. he had a medal that talked about that. And, uh, like, let's see. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, see, well, you're, you're on a computer. Suppo- you're I not take, supposed I to notes. have. He was an, Sergei, was an eccentric Chernobyl liquidator turned gymnast. Yeah. Who owns a mouse circus now. Yep. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Cool, cool guy. <laughs> I mean, that would be an awesome dude to like be living above you. Uh, he opens up one of the packages and is found smelling cheese. And he tells her he's training his mice and hopes the cheese will alleviate their apartment, their apparent musical difficulties. Uh, but before Caroline can turn and lead, the amazing Babinski jumps down from the balcony and issues a warning mm-hmm. and says that the mice say, do not go through the little door. Which, do you think he's talking about the little door in the house? I will say this. Uh, I always listen to the advice from Little Mice. Yeah. Because it rhymes. Little Mice advice. Yeah. If the if the Little Mices have advices, <laughs> I'm a listener. Smart. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. I learned that from watching Mickey Mouse as a kid. I was like, this these mices. <laughs> M-I-C. Love these Mises to K-E-Y. pieces. So Caroline laughs off the warning, though, because she does not listen to mice. M-O-U-S-E. And uh, she thinks the whole, she's starting to think the whole thing was a dream anyway. And she went to the start to go to the basement to talk to Miss Spink and Miss Forcible, who I talked about them, retired burlesque. And they just like to sit there and reminisce about like their days gone by. Yeah. Like a lot of old people. Well Remember when? They were the they were the best t- times. Yeah. And yeah, they also had many Scotty dogs. Talked about that. Very interesting apartment complex. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of eccentric people. But they, uh, they gave Coraline, CJ, some tea. And then when she was done, they read her tea leaves. 
And Miss Pink thought that it, uh, she was in danger and said her tea leaves formed the shape of a gnarled hand. Well, Miss Forcible, like, turned her cup around and said, nah, it's a giraffe. It's a giraffe. It did look like a giraffe. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you look at problems differently. Yeah. And it might be a giraffe. Hey, when life gives you a deformed-looking hand, make giraffes out make of it. Make giraffes. That's what I say. Yeah. Back outside, CJ runs back in the YB as he's on the hunt for slugs. And Did uh, YB's cat have a name? They call him Wuss Puss because he doesn't want to get his feet wet, That's but right. I don't think he likes that. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, so well, she just, calls him that. Yeah, so it's just kind of cat. But she takes uh, some pictures of YB and his slugs. And then, yeah, that's when YB again admits, admits that he's never even been in the pink, uh, not pink panther. The pink palace. Pink palace. Yeah. Why do I keep YB also, pink panther? he uses the slug as a mustache. Oh, yeah, that was on the good, good pictures. Look. I, saw, I saw that picture. That's online if you Google it. Okay. I believe you. <laughs> He said that he's not allowed in there because when his grandma lived there as a kid, his sister got taken. Yeah. So that was kind of, ugh. Look, and then, look, uh, learning a little bit more why uh, grandma might not. And CJ was like, maybe she ran away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be at 11. I know stuff. And uh, she asked about the doll. Uh, I was says he found the doll about? just as it is, and it must be as old as the house. Yeah. But, you and know. then I think YB's even like he's not even sure if it is her. Yeah, but and it kind of looks like just, well, I mean, blue hair, it's got raincoat, all of my features. Yeah. So I only wear one outfit. <laughs> I'm a, like a like a cartoon character or something. Like yeah, a cartoon character. Uh, crazy. That night, CJ she left cheese at the entrance to try to like get the mice to come back. The, they love cheese. I guess she thinks she has to chase the mice to the door, and the mice are somehow involved. But uh, she is awoken by the squeals, squeaks, uh, the squeals of the, the squeaks, and they follow them through the portal. And then she finds her other mother cooking in the kitchen using the very cheese CJ had left out for the mice. Mm-hmm. I want there's mice in that stew. Other oh, mother sends, what do you think about that? sends Coraline to fetch other father from the garden, where uh, Coraline finds him on a tractor. But it's a tractor shaped as a praying mantis. It's pretty cool. Pretty effing cool. Yeah. Oh, you like that? Can, you, you, said you have yourself. to beep out effing? I think you effing? Because it's like elfin. Well, now I mean. you just keep saying Yeah, elfin. <laughs> okay, I'm done. So he had a cool piano yeah. with like arms. Yep. And now he has a praying mantis uh, mower. Yeah, with fluorescent flames and snapdragon. Or, uh, yeah, and they, they get on it, the tractor. And then it, like, spouts wings. Yeah. And they just start flying around, looking at all the pretty garden, like all the fluorescent flowers and the snapdragons. And uh, it actually kind of resembles Coraline. Like, like yeah. the overall aerial view of it is he made all the flowers to look like his daughter. That's nice. That was real nice. And after dinner that night, other mother introduces uh, CJ to the other YB. Explaining that she made this YB so he doesn't talk. Because she thinks it would, she th- would like it. Yeah, right? yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, well, YB's just out here trying to be a cool kid. YB, yeah, he just wants to welcome people. Yeah. And then uh, Coraline does like the other YB. He's way better, and together they go visit the amazing Babinski. Mm-hmm. Now this is the this is the other. other oh, yeah, the other amazing yeah. Babinski. Sorry, they're in the other world right now. And inside the flat, they are surprised by the popcorn machines and the cannons that shoot cotton candy. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. Pretty awesome a, place. A circus tent in the middle of the room, and once inside, uh, CJ, another YB, see the amazing Babinski, and the mice put on a musical show. They're, like, bouncing on circus balls, and Babinski's flying around. It's like a big, giant tent inside this apartment. It doesn't make sense. No. It's got to be. But again, like. It's a haunting. This just sounds like a cool place to be. Yeah. Like, if I'm going to be haunted, sign me I up for this. I want to be a Chernobyl guy with mice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, performing, <laughs> Please. Performing circus acts. But Babinski thanks him for coming, and they head back home, and she goes to sleep. Says Dulce Vidonia. Yep. Maybe. I don't know if he does. Probably. He's Russian. But she goes back to sleep with other mother, other father, and other YB just standing over her watching. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I like to go to sleep. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be at least three people watching me. Actually, uh... That's core ordered, actually. Other Bobinski. Yeah. Uh... The new where, like, they do the weird thing where, like, he kissed her hand. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and then, like, it flips and it's, like, it's other mother kissing 
oh, heard yeah. at night, and it was a very a lot of you can't trust what you, the brain's gonna play tricks on. Yeah, you. other or, world, other world's starting to get to core line a little bit. I think. Yeah, I feel. Yeah, the more you're there, mm-hmm. you're like, this isn't right. The weirdness starts to set in. That morning, uh, Coraline wakes back up in her normal bed, and her mother takes her clothes shopping. Yeah. For uh, school clothing. Because the school's having a President's Day thing. Yeah. Where all the kids are going to dress up as presidents. In their grayest clothes. The grayest clothes they can find. <laughs> like, we're in Oregon. We don't have any color. That's right. Uh, but while there, uh, she finds a pair of gloves that she likes. Because mm-hmm, they are they have some collar, too. Yeah. Them. And her mom's like, huh. Yeah. Get that noise out of my face. She's like, no collar. I don't, I'm not buying you anything. Yeah, on it. like we're we are here to get you out. We're outfits. here for gray clothes, yep. gray clothes only. And uh, they get back from the from the clothes shopping, and she sees that her mother has locked the door and the, placed uh, the key up high, the door. small door. Yeah. Yes, because she found mouse excrement. Yeah. Poop. Yeah, mouse poop. She called the she called the poop excrement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, and like Coraline's pretty mad at this point. You know, she didn't get the gloves. Your mom locked the door. And uh, it's all over some mouse poop. Yeah, and it's like her mom's gonna go shopping. Yeah, she said because like they in the fridge at the time, all they had was uh, tortilla shells. I think not a lot. I can't remember, but it was uh, they just mustard. moved there. Yeah, it wasn't anything good. No, but no. they were gonna try to make that work. And the mom was like, "Well, I'll go to the store," and she wanted Coraline to go, but. She but was she was not happy. Now Coraline's so just kind of throwing a fit. Yeah, she's gonna stay home. It's only a little bit of a tantrum. And as soon as her mom leaves, she gets the key down and unlocks the yeah. door. That's Mischievous. The, yep. And uh, surprisingly, the passage is open this time. She's awake, middle of the day. Passage open. So of course she crawls through again. Like you do. And uh, the cat watches from the window. And um, just shakes its head like, just, "What nope, are you yep. doing?" She looks back and just sees the cat. Like, nope, shouldn't do it. But in the other world, CJ finds the house uh, strangely empty. And uh, on the table, there's a gift box for Coraline. And it was a new outfit and a note saying to go see Spink Enforceable. And it was some gloves, wasn't it? All gloves, yeah. yeah. What did I say? Outfit? Yeah. She got oh, her the sorry. gloves she wanted. She got the gloves. She said she made them for her. As they had something to show, Coraline, after lunch. Who has who has something to show? Uh, Spink Enforceable, okay. the, okay. the retired burlesque. burlesque ladies, yeah. And then outside, she runs into the cat, but the cat doesn't have buttons over his eyes. Mm-hmm. And then the cat talks. That's right. And he's like, "I can traverse between the worlds, and that's why I don't have buttons, and I can talk in this world." Yeah. Which once he explains it, it makes sense. <laughs> it made. But I how, thought it made total sense right off the bat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, the, the cat can travel through If there's worlds. a praying mantis flying tractor, the cats can then travel back and forth. Then cat travel talk. back and forth to talk? Yeah. yeah. Why couldn't it? I would. I mean, I would have been shocked if it couldn't. <laughs> but the cat warns uh, Coraline of the other mother and her evil intentions. And now I'm a little confused here because I usually listen to mice advice. Yeah. <laughs> but now I've got a cat attack, oh, a talking cat. A talking cat. And we all know how cats. Cats and uh, mice get along. Yeah. So I don't know who to believe now. And also, you have Bobinski translating for the mice. So, I mean, he's can been we really trust Chernobyl, Chernobyl? The radiation addled brain Sergei. of him? Yeah. Oh, of, man. of him at this point? Yeah. This is so. tough. This is, uh, Coraline's in deep at yeah. this point. Yeah. She's rolling Let's in the see. deep, as her dad <laughs> would say. So, yeah, the cat can talk. The cat can come back and forth between the two worlds. Uh, no buttons on the cat's yeah. eyes. And so the cat's like, not, like, the cat knows that this is not a good place to be. Yeah. And the cat is not a fan. He's not a fan of the other mother. Yeah. But uh, but Coraline's cool. Like, cool, I'm going down to the basement. And then she goes down, and the basement is turned into a giant auditorium. And there's hundreds of Scottish dogs. Yeah. Uh, and the other YB is sitting in the front row. And then Spinks and Forcible start to perform individual skits in, like, really unflattering outfits. Very, yeah, unflattering. Yeah, like, for those ages, like, act your age, ladies. <laughs> Hold I mean, on a second. Especially in front of... I just turned my hat around backwards, kids. Hello, fellow teens. Act your age! I, I just mean... went from 43 to 37. Well. <laughs> Watch this, though. 
Well, 56. Not. 56! Oh, I was going to go the opposite. Oh, really? Yeah, I was going to no, go the opposite. No, that's worse. 20. My hat's like cocked, not sideways, but not backwards. We were that like goofy 19 to 20 year old. Yeah, just but, doesn't know but I'm 43, so it actually jacks yeah. me up to 57. Yeah. So I got to go back to 37. Right. Okay. Uh, Whew, that was close. It's backwards again. Yeah, the outfits are especially, like, if, if it was an adult audience, uh huh, then whatever. Yeah. But, like, you're performing for... Uh, Children, basically. For 11 and year dogs. 11-year-old girl, Scotch Terriers, <laughs> and YB doll, who yeah. he's the same age. Other YB. Other YB. Yeah. Yeah. So, ow. He's not going to say anything, though. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they do their little skits, which is... Just the best thing to call things. Little skits. Yeah, little skits. Uh, Next, the ladies stand on uh, diving boards. And as they're bouncing up and down, uh, their skin unzips and their youthful skinny selves emerge to finish the act. Impressive act. That's... You got to close with that. Ta-da! Yeah. yeah. You don't do that. They'd be like, what else? What, what else? else? What yeah. else? You did you like, it. You try to, like, re-zip again. <laughs> like a baby just, Wah! Like, no. That's it. Good performance. Show over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man. Like, they were in suits the whole time, I guess. The whole time. Why not just be young and youthful? Well, because then you don't have a show. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So back uh, back home, the other mother tells Coraline that she can stay in this world forever. It's easy. It's super easy. All you gotta do is sew some buttons over your eyes. Uh, oh well. Wait, you like both eyes? Yeah, oh yeah. I got the buttons right here. You can yeah. listen, listen. Okay, listen. Wait. Uh, I'll you listen. can pick out the collar of the buttons. Uh, but you're still, gonna, you're still gonna sew. Oh them yeah, they're getting sewed right eyes. over your eyes, just like into my uh, into yeah, my yeah, eyes. your button eyes. Mm. <laughs> Any <laughs> collar? But yep, and you can stay here forever uh, with the creepy <laughs> downstairs neighbors. Now, can I stay here without the buttons? No, no, you have to have the buttons. Could we put the buttons somewhere? Else? <laughs> nope, only on your eyes. Look my around. Elbow. Look around while you can. Look around <laughs> because everyone has I buttons have, for I eyes. Have noticed that <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of buttons on the eyes, yep. but I thought, a lot of buttons. I uh, <laughs> you're really starting to push my buttons. Make a decision. <laughs> I don't like <laughs> things sewed over my eyes. And that's what Coraline said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was like, "Thanks, but no thanks," and she's like, "I'm gonna go to bed." And uh, but she goes upstairs and tries to make herself go to bed. She hides all her toys, throws her, you know, or the picture of her friends in the in the drawer, yeah. and just like cowers under the covers. And she finally falls asleep. But then when she wakes up, she's not back home. She's still in the other world. Uh oh. Yeah. Dun dun dun. Uh, and that's where our story ends. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. You know, I, w- I would have had to have asked, though, if I was in that situation. Uh, like, so if you sew the buttons over my eyes, uh-huh. can I still see everything? Through the buttons? I bet not. Because it seems like the holes in the buttons are at the top and the bottom, and the buttons are right over your Because now we're defeating the purpose of me staying. Maybe by the sides, if you could, like, turn your head like your side eyes, your like you might have, like, a little tiny bit of yeah. seeing something. I don't know. Like, I feel like if I take this deal... You want to be able to see what's going I'm on. I'm losing the, the thing that I'm wanting to, like yeah. the best part of the deal. Yeah. So I'm beginning to think other mother <laughs> is. Maybe the cat's not wrong. Yeah. You know, I know, you only, tr- I know you only trust mice, but I, maybe no, this no, time. Well, I said I don't know who to trust. There's a fine feline. My the, trust the, is starting to turn towards the feline. Okay. In this situation, because things aren't adding up. <laughs> They're not. It's otherworldly. Oh, uh, because it's the other world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Where so she I? wakes up. She's still in the other world. Yeah. Now, do you think that's because she traveled there during the day? Oh, maybe. She didn't do it in her sleep. Right. So maybe she doesn't need to go to sleep. She's got to crawl through it. But uh, she says she's still in the other world, but things are different. Other father is all sad now playing the piano. Yeah. He's not quite as bright and bubbly as he was before. And uh, CJ's over. She demands to see other mother. But other father says they mustn't talk when other mother isn't around. So things are definitely, like, not cool. Yeah. Like, on a scale of one to not cool, it's rapidly going the wrong <laughs> way. Cool. Yeah, Not a lot of room there. Vibes are changing yeah. for the worst. You didn't give it, like, a lot of... Yeah. You gave it one, you gave it one or the other. Uh, uh, she says she's going to find other YB and figure out a way to leave. Mm-hmm. 
You know, she's got one friend, other wivey. Yeah. He she can trust him. Albie. Oh, Albie. Um, um. Oh wait, wow, whoa. Albie. <laughs> and other father's like, yeah, I wouldn't worry about other wivey. Well, that's other army. mother kind of took care of him. He had a long face, and she did not like it. <laughs> So my lines. my uh, red flag uh, <laughs> alert signals going up. Yeah, so Coraline, that's her. She left. She's like, "Oh, I'm out of here." And then the cat started walking with her, and the cat's like, "What's up, meow?" You don't ever want to hear that other mother took care of YB. Like, yeah, but then the cat starts explaining to her that like all this is like changing because it's not real. Yeah, like other mother made the place. Because she wanted to make a place, like, specifically and perfectly for Coraline. Right. To draw her in. To sew buttons on her eyes. You and know? as we've talked about, not <laughs> the best deal. No. And as they walked away from the house, the house slowly came into view. And in the cat's defense, the, the cat never once says, I told you so, dumb. Yeah. <laughs> the cat, so, yeah. That's very cool of the cat. Yeah, the cat's still. And he calls him Wuss Puss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but isn't that they were walking away from the house when the house came into view? And how do you get closer? She them can't when you walk get away. away. From she can't get away from it. And uh, Coraline, all she can do is just kind of mutter, "Huh, small world." Yeah, <laughs> uh, she's got jokes. <laughs> she's had a dryly, okay. Yeah. Well, she's got a dry. According delivery. to reports, right. according to the cat who we, cat we interviewed in the other world, we got a lot of information. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, we didn't have to go to the other world. We got Colin. Yeah, yeah, I had to block his number. Yep. He was calling in a pollen. Well. Dad jokes. I don't even know if that was a joke. I got dad joke. jokes. Lily wrote a joke. She had a joke. Uh, speaking of cats, what's a cat's favorite drink? Oh, no. Meow and do. Uh, uh, it's a good one. Lily wrote that one. Meow and do. Meow and do. Uh, see, the cat. I don't even know what my words are. <laughs> The cat Make says uh, her mother wants Coraline for something to love or something to eat. Either could go either yep, way. You're not get loved or eat. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I love you so much, I can just eat you up. Nom, but I don't nom, mean nom, it. Nom, 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 oh, I'll do that too. Nom, 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 nom. But I'm not really going to eat the person. But well, we don't know about other mother. <laughs> yeah, other mother though. She's she's another story. She's the other story. Other story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to either love her eater, one or the other. And then back inside, Coraline checks the small door and see that there's been a, a dresser drawer is now blocking the door. <laughs> a, bur- a bureau, what do they call it? Bureau? A, bu- a uh, uh, it's a dresser. It's a, Yeah. It's like a, a weird, funky uh, dresser uh, blocking mm-hmm. the door. Big enough where CJ can't move it. Yeah, the, so she's the stuck. Drawers, the drawers, the drawers, yeah, the drawers. <laughs> Words. But she does find other the mother, and she demands to go back home. But uh, other mother gets angry and tells her to apologize as she counts to three. You know how that goes. kids don't like that. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, you got to the count of three. Like you got to count it. Like just let's just. <laughs> you got to count it. And I see other parents do that. And it, like I've never done that once. I don't think. Lily, if I'm wrong, leave it in the comments. I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was very quick to like. Uh, if my one, two, three. <laughs> if my parents would have like said, "I'm gonna count to whatever," yeah. I would have probably been like, "Yeah, like you know numbers." Okay. Like I probably. <laughs> yeah. oh, the views expressed by Cash do not reflect the views of middle aged and mediocre kids. You be good. Listen to your parents. Respect them. Okay. I was, I was a very respectful child, but I also <laughs> was very sarcastic. Yeah, so I, I, I'd say that's me. Yeah. Respectful yet sarcastic. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, so while counting, other mother's body begins to transform, and she starts to grow grotesquely tall. And not like a transformer. No, no, no. Nothing. Not like beep do ba do ba do beep. Not <laughs> yeah. like she didn't turn into like a boombox. No. Like that would have been <laughs> awesome. That's, oh! a, that's a beep. Oh, man. It would have been awesome, though. Transformers got me yeah. closer. I got so excited. Yeah, they did. Oh, passion is good. Yeah. But I got to learn to. We oh, just I can't about, yeah. believe I did it. Well, you did it. 
But you're going to bleep it? I'll, I got to. You got to. I have to. Oh, wow. No, that's worked for me. Can you bleep it with like a funny noise, like a big fart noise or something? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, no problem. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that. But yeah, she's transforming like grotesquely and like growing all big and tall and like her arms are elongated and stuff. And at three, other mother grabs Coraline and throws her through a mirror into a dark room. Uh, <laughs> with a bed. You just did the, the uh, <laughs> what show was that from? <laughs> I don't know, but it has a bed. I don't know what kind of bed. I don't know that word. I mean, it was a bed. Yeah, and tells Coraline she can come out when she learns how to be a loving daughter. Which means get buttons sewn over your eyes. <laughs> yeah, when you're ready for buttons <laughs> over your eyes. Well, while in the room, CJ finds three ghost children. Mm-hmm. Two girls and one boy who tells Coraline uh, to be quiet because they call the other mother Beldum. Yeah, we start to get a little bit of a similarity between uh, the case of uh, the who well, who was the the dude in the mask that was stealing those kidnapping people. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, he would kidnap <laughs> kids, uh, and then the one kid, like the ghost of the Michael other Jackson. <laughs> Ask your dad about. <laughs> that. Uh, She's gonna ask me. I don't, I don't know. It was okay. Uh, a mask and they still. Oh, a black phone. There you go. Yeah, we we'll start getting some similarities here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the ghost doesn't remember their own names. That's, that's yeah. That's sad. Yeah. Oh, that's where it's like yeah. black phone. And they remember the Beldum using dolls in their image to spy on them and see what made them unhappy. And then they use that info, using that info. Uh, other mother would lure the children to the other world, offering treats and loving them. And the children, happy, so they thought, allowed Beldum to sew buttons over their eyes. But then she ate up their lives and cast their souls inside the mirror. Yeah. So, you know, don't let people sew buttons over your eyes. Never. Never. Like, not once in your life <laughs> should you let that happen. No. The children said their eyes. There's a lot were... of things where I'm like, you should try it once. Like, once <laughs> yeah, you're just old enough to know. Yeah. Decisions. Yeah. But not this. Not buttons. <laughs> not <guys>. buttons. That's <laughs> where we draw yeah. the line. Yeah, yeah. Middle aged and mediocre draws we're, the line. We're firmly against sewing buttons over children's eyes. Firmly against. Like 100%. We'll take that stance. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100% of the time. Yeah. Every time. Like, you love children hostages. And I don't agree with that. <laughs> now, I don't love it. <laughs> I just said it's effi- efficient. <laughs> Effective if that's from our last episode. Yeah, don't listen to that one. <laughs> but the children said their eyes were stolen and hidden, oh. and they asked. Uh, they were like, "Hey, Coraline, why don't you go ahead and escape, and then you can find our eyes and then free us." And Coraline's got to be like, "Does everyone want something from me?" Yeah, like, do I got to sew buttons over my eyes first? <laughs> yeah. Like, what? When does it stop? When does Coraline just do something for <laughs> yeah. Coraline? Like, I just moved here. I'm 11. <laughs> like, I'm emotionally. I'm 11. I'm in a place. <laughs> I'm 11. That's the biggest. <laughs> They're putting a lot on me. I'm 11, good <laughs> sir, and madams. <laughs> but they were ready to be gone. And Caroline, though, she's like, all right, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> she's like, why not? I got but you, just fam. then, other woke, woke, other wivey, other woke, uh, pulled CJ back through the mirror, but his mouth has been sewn into an awful wide grin. Yeah. Like, like think the Joker or something. Like, just creepy. Yeah, poor wivey. Yeah. But he still, he helped her. And then, uh, but Coraline pulls the thread and on the grin, so that at least took that care of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, then other YB takes her to the portal. The dresser jawarvers <laughs> are now gone. And uh, Coraline wants other YB to come with her. But he just pulls off his glove and shows that his hand, like, turns to dust and disappears. Because he can't talk. Yeah. So it's, a lot, a, of, rough it's a lot of miming. Right. Yeah. And uh, But Nothing then he just pushes her through the portal and back to the real world. And what's in the real world, CJ can't find her parents anywhere. The food her mother went to the grocery store for. Remember, that's when she left. Her mother went to the grocery store. She went through the portal. So now right. she's back. The food's there, but it's all rotted. And there's flies and everything. And uh, she just doesn't. She's confused. But then the there's time a time in the other world is must be different. Must be different. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> Like, Doc Brown could probably explain it really well. Kids, Back to the Future 1 <laughs> right. and 2, watch them. The third one, yeah. you got to watch it, but just be warned, it's not good. I mean, if you got nothing else to do, 
If I was going to cuss, I would say bad words about it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> But I won't. I already cussed once about Transformers. I would say a lot of, especially, you know, in the video game, too. Like, somehow, the, the first two video games are, are terrible. Yeah. But somehow, like, even the third video game is the worst of them all. So I, sometimes I like to pretend the third one never happened. I'm and I live in a world where it's just the first two. I'm similar with the Ninja Turtles movies. Yeah. Which I guess there's more now. But, like, of the original. Of the original three. Well, I have all this on the HS, two. too, by the way. Yeah, the third one's no good. It doesn't exist. I get you. Yeah. I, get you. I didn't mean to unzip you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unzipped. <laughs> but Caroline can't find her parents anywhere, and then there's a knock at the door, and it's YB. <laughs> and YB's like, hey, my name's Y-Boy, and my family hates me. YB's saying that he needs the doll back from Coraline. His uh, grandmother is a little bit angry, because the doll belonged to her missing sister. Yeah, hey, no reason. I'm just YB here for the doll. You know, no reason I need it back. I just need it back. <laughs> <laughs> Coraline, yeah, that's how we talk. That's how they can talk. Realizes that one of the ghost children was Wybie's grandmother's sister's yeah. neighbor's mailman's roommate. Is that true? No, it was just her grandmother's sister. One of the I ghost children so. was. But so once I started going, I was like, I gotta keep with these relations. I, like, I missed the, the crazy explanation for who it was. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, with the the one of the she realized one of the ghosts is actually the missing child. You know, the grandmother's sister. The reason why she and she be. tries to explain all this to Wybie, and Wybie's like, uh uh-uh, uh, and he freaks out and just runs away. Yeah. He's 11. He can't, yeah. He's like, I'm 11! <laughs> yeah. I don't want any of this. So, uh, Corbyn went and visited Spink and Forcible to ask him for their help. And uh, they they broke open a ball of taffy and gave her a special scene stone. From like 1902 oh, or something? Yeah, it was like, it's like a triangle with a little circle in and it. And she's like, what am I going to do with candy? Yeah, thanks for nothing! And then they take, I'm 11! They take big <laughs> sewing needles and chop it all up. Yeah. And then the one blows it away, and there's a little cool triangle thing. Yeah, with a circle in the middle. Yeah. And it's a seeing stone. A seeing stone, yeah. And uh, and and then uh, Coraline takes it and returns home. And she's like, what do I do with this? Yeah, and she just kind of real sadly makes fake parents to fall asleep between. Yeah. Pillow parents. Yeah. And uh, so she cries herself to sleep, but she's awakened by the cat sitting on her chest. And it has the doll. Only now the doll is different. It's got two sides, and on either side is one of her parents. Mm, I missed that part. Yeah. So, uh, and and she uh, so she takes the doll and throws it into the fire and melts it. And while she's there, she notices in the hallway mirror. She says her sees her parents on the in the other side of the mirror, shivering. And they helped write. They write helped us on the frosted glass. So now she knows where her parents are. They're so, in, they're somewhere in the other world, apparently. Bold move when all this craziness is happening. Yeah. To burn your. That's doll. what I thought. I was like, what if the dolls need it? What if, like, first step, we need to get the doll. It's ooh, ooh, ooh the doll. Like the magic doll. I didn't know we would need. Do you that. guys need some ashes of the doll? Would they're that like, work? They're like, well, you didn't like burn it, did you? That's like the only way to really uh, stop it. Oh, I shouldn't <laughs> have burned it. But, I wish Wybie would have told me. But also, anytime there's a doll involved, <laughs> yeah. you got to think voodoo doll. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm going to throw my doll. Or the me. parents. Like, what if the parents just burned alive yeah. in the air? Yeah. I'm Risky not. move. Risky move. Risky, but she's 11. She's 11. She's 11. <laughs> she shouldn't <laughs> even be dealing with all of this. So yeah, she, she takes the fire. Oh, she sees her parents, and then she goes down and throws the doll in the fire. Mm-hmm. So she knows her parents are in the other world, and still burns that little doll. I about said that mf her. <laughs> I heard it. You, you know me it. well enough. You thought it was coming. You were braced. Yeah. I, oh, thought, I can't believe I cursed. So we have to fart this thing again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 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 see. So she's burned the doll. She knows her parents. Yeah, but she makes a promise to herself. She's gonna rescue her parents, even though they're laying pieces of crap. And they don't really love her. Well, let's, whoa, let's pump the brakes on that. I'm kidding. But she's starting to, that's maybe what she thought at first. But now that she's seen these other whack world jobs people. in the other world, she's like, maybe my parents aren't so bad. They're just humans trying. And that's right. the point of today's episode, Maybe folks. there's an episode, or there's, an, uh, there's a meaning behind all of this. There's definitely an episode behind it. We're doing it. Oh. Okay. Is that what this is? <laughs> yep. Well, that's what they record. <laughs> oh, you didn't? <laughs> Uh, but she's gonna. So she takes the triangle stone and holds it into the skeleton key and some tools, and she goes back to the portal. 
And, you know, she's like a little mini Schwarzenegger at this point. Yeah. And uh, once she's in the other world, the cat tells her, she says to challenge the other mother to a game. Mm. She says she can't refuse a game. She tells the other mother she can't refuse a game. No, she tells the cat. Or uh, the cat tells okay. Coraline this. I thought Coraline has made up the rule. No, 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 no. Okay. The cat told her. The cat knows. And the other mother stuff. was like, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's like if the cat said so, we got to trust cats. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Coraline hears her mother, though, in the drawing room in the other world. And she runs to hug her. But when she hugs her, the other mother turns into the... Her mother turns into the beldam. Yeah. It was a trick. Real evil looking. Yeah, it's kind of, it was a Real trick. Scary. And it takes the skeleton key from Coraline and swallows it. And, uh, but first, locked the door. Mm-hmm. And then swallowed the key. So CJB stuck. And the Belton drags Coraline into the kitchen and again offers her the chance to stay forever. She's like, look, I know I'm super scary and I locked up your parents, but... I really like for you to reconsider this deal. Buttons? Eyes? <laughs> Surely you thought about it. And uh, but Coraline counter offers with the game, and she says, "Listen, if I can find my parents in the lost children's eyes, then you have to let me go. All of us go. Yeah. And if I can't do it, you know, sew buttons over my eyes. Right. I'll, so be it. I'll be a button girl. So be it. Oh, wow, because hey, so that's, a, that's another word that can be spelled two ways. So be it. Yeah. Yeah. And she would let <laughs> Beldum sew the buttons over her eyes." And Beldum uh, agrees, reluctantly, but she can't refuse a game. I guess. Oh, what if they were like, let's play Monopoly, and every time she had to be like, oh my god, okay, what is, let's play Monopoly! What if the cat was wrong? <laughs> like, I challenge you to a game. No. She's just like, so, um, <laughs> just says the button. But, uh... <laughs> but the talk, all oh, the talking cat told you? Yeah. Okay! <laughs> Alright, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number one of the other world, cats don't know Anything. <laughs> I wasn't going to say the S word. It's a cat. <laughs> uh, but she also says, uh, first you have to give me a clue. Which the cat never even said no. about that. And the Beldum was like, alright, I'll give you a clue. Yeah, I thought that part was strange. And, uh, but this. the clue is, in each of three wonders I've made just for you, a ghost eye is lost in plain sight. Mm-hmm. So it didn't even rhyme. So no. it's not the best clue. I don't think clues have to rhyme. <laughs> Uh, but then, uh, uh, let's see. Did I skip the page? Nope. The three wonders. So the, then Coraline discovers in the garden that well, while... Coraline we- also tries to get more information. About oh, she the does? Yeah. And the be- the Beldum's like, look, how much do you expect me to do yeah. here? Like, so you gotta, she's you like, figure something out, kid. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder why. Why did you hear so bad? <laughs> so Coraline goes out to the garden and holds the stone up to her eye and notices that the world's all black and white when she looks through it. Yeah. Except for colors of the light, eyes. which are the eyes. Yeah. And uh, let's see. And then the first one she sees is the skies is the shift knob on the praying mantis tractor. Which is a cool sentence to turns say. Turns out, yeah, it is. It <laughs> turns out that praying mantis tractor is a whole lot scarier now. Yep, yep. It's yeah. The other world's starting to lose its uh, shine a little and bit. And other fathers on the tractor. chasing her, saying he's he doesn't want to, but yeah. other mothers Sorry. making him. Sorry about this. Yeah. Sorry. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hate to do it. Sorry. But then he crashes the tractor into the water. But before it goes down, he reaches his hand up and hands her the eye. Yeah. So good job, other father. Good dude. Good, good dude. dude. In the end, not really, but at least he uh, did something good. I mean, there. I don't know if he had any control over <laughs> his earlier actions. And uh, but then uh, she gets the the eye. The garden turns to stone and everything dies. Yeah. Uh, so with time running out, Coraline races to the basement, finding Sphinx and Forcible have a. Uh, they're covered in Laffy Taffy wallpaper up on the stage. And uh, she sees another eye and reaches in a glass. And as she does, she gets the, and, uh, the Sphinx. And as she's coming in, there's just bats. Everywhere. Yeah, the dogs are bats. Scotty bats. Yeah. But she does get the eye, and then everything dies and disintegrates. Because she throws, she throws something at the bats. And annoys them until they attack. Yeah. And they attack the two. And that's that's good advice there, too. If you see bats, throw things at them <laughs> yeah. until you annoy them. Oh, great advice. No, that's not great advice. <laughs> the the advice expressed here on Bill Wage Mediocre is not... Don't uh, listen to any of this. It should not be uh, followed. 
So all that goes down, and she, you know, gets her second eye, and then she goes uh, upstairs to the amazing Babinski's apartment. Sarah Legay. Yeah. And tries to get the last stone. And then uh, she realizes that the last stone is actually underneath his hat. Mm-hmm. And when she grabs the eye, uh, the amazing Sir, uh, Babinski, what's his name? Sergey. He melts away, revealing just a big old pile of mice. He was never a person. He was just a bunch of (laughs) mices and clothes. And you trusted these mice. I trusted these mice. You know how many times I have fallen for the old old clothes? I know you think you learned. Clothes full of mouses. Yeah. I do know. I've been there for half of them. It's awful. It's embarrassing for me. I can't imagine how you feel. Oh, the amount of cheese I've given away. So the head mouse takes the eye and runs out the apartment. On a wheel of cheese. <laughs> well, of course on a wheel of cheese. Well, I mean, it's not just going to be able to run as a mouse. It's their little cars. <laughs> but as, as, uh, as Coraline tries to escape the apartment, the whole thing's starting to just disintegrate yeah. upon itself. And as she's on the balcony, it, 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 it collapses and she crashes down. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. she thought she was done. Because she thought the mouse got away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's on a ball of cheese, and she's crashed down from a She doesn't cream. have a big wheel of cheese she's 11. to chase after. Yeah. She's 11. <laughs> you don't get a wheel of cheese to run on until you're at least 16. Or a mouse. In my per- in back when I was a kid, yeah. Yeah. But then uh, the cat shows up with the head mouse in his mouth with the eye, and he's like, I don't like mice. Yeah, I told you. Yeah. Don't so, trust no mice. Ate that mouse. <laughs> and then they go inside. Uh, so now he has all three eyes. And they go inside, and they find their mom and dad, and uh, the other mother, and wait, what, huh? Yeah, they go, uh, so she has all three of the eyes now. Yeah. And then she she realizes, because the, uh, the buttons covered the moon. Yep. So she realizes she's almost, almost out of time. They got to get back into the house to uh, save her parents, and the whole world is uh, turning to gray. Yeah. So kind of like... She has to get in the house really quick, or she's going. Oh, to be... she's trying to find her mom and dad. Yeah, okay, she's going to be yeah. lost in the gray soon. Yeah, right? but she finds the Beldum is there, and she's now reduced to her true form of a giant spider. Creepy. Yeah, super creepy. If she was a regular sized spider, you just step on her. But but she's a giant spider. giant spider. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of steps. Yeah, and she takes the triangle stones and throws it into the fire. Oh, jerk. But she's kind of done with it because she already found all the. Unless I was, she's going to use that to find her parents. I like how most things in this story just, just end up in the fire. Just in the fire. Yeah, like Billy Joel slides in. He's like, We didn't start the fire. We was all in fairness since the world was turning. Kids, That's, ask your ask your parents. <laughs> Billy Joel. You gotta like put that right there. Oh, it's gonna get. I keep forgetting that's gonna be right there. I mean, you know, I'm glad that like you're telling, you're saying, like you're giving stage directions. Yeah, and it's just gonna be a part of the episode. (laughs) It's right there. So like you're just showing how the magic. What if it's just a picture of me doing this right here now? And it's just like a mirror, like a yeah, like it's this picture here, here. Uh, That's gonna be so much work. (laughs) (laughs) Plus the bleep. Plus the fart noise. Okay, uh, you don't have to do that. Oh, uh, I gotta put a fart noise <laughs> on both the audio recording and the video recording. <laughs> okay, so uh, he's a spider, and she takes the triangle, throws it in the fire, mm-hmm. and Coraline is worried that she'll never find her parents. Right. But just then, she looks up on the mantle, and there's a row of snow globes, and she spots her parents are in one of the globes, the snowy one. Yeah. That's why they were so cold. Well, they're all snowy, I guess, because they're snow Most, globes. Most, they're snow globes. I'm a dummy. <laughs> you know. I'm a dummy. But she picks up the cat, and uh, well, at she... first the cat's like, the cat's kind of helping out a lot here. The cat's yeah. like using his eyes to be like, "Hey, check this out." <laughs> oh yeah. And then like, "Hey, look over there." <laughs> so like, she tricks the beldum uh-huh. by saying like, "I know where they are," and the beldum's like, "No, you don't." Yeah. And she's like, "No, I do." <laughs> she's like, "But you don't." And she's like, "Oh yeah, they're right over there by that doorway." So and she's like, "Oh, you think that's where they are?" Yeah. She's like, "Yeah, go open it." She's like, oh, I will open it, and you're wrong. Like, well, show me. I don't think I am, though. And she spider walked in. And this whole time, she's kind of looking over at the snow globe. Uh huh. Yeah, she's got the cat. And then she throws the cat. Which <laughs> was. Oh, no. Uh, Thanks for the help, cat. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> a little heads up would have been nice. Oh, man. Just chucks the cat. It was the. Uh, uh, if there's any kids out there that are fans of comic books, it's the classic Colossus throwing Wolverine. Yeah. The the fast the speedball special. Or wrestling Braun Fastball Strowman throwing that. Ricochet. Well, they stole it from Wolverine Colossus. Sure so, they did. I mean, they did. I'm just saying, though, if you're not into comic books, but you like wrestling. But, I mean. I was into wrestling and not comic books. But, I mean, but okay, fine. <laughs> 
So the cat didn't like being thrown no, at the bell. No. <laughs> so it scratched. Most cats don't enjoy it, being thrown. It went ahead and scratched the button eyes off of the bell. And that's, as it's going on, the room's just falling apart. Which, uh, hey, good for the cat to be able to, like, I'm glad the cat was able to fight and live. Yeah. Because that could have easily went real south. Oh, yeah. That's a scary. That's a Third giant cat spider, spider lady. Just eat him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eat him up. So glad that worked well, out. Well, the whole house just melts away Into a to nothing but, like, a low net of webbing. Yeah. Because she's a spider. Yeah, so now it's a big spider web. And now uh, Coraline is stuck in the webbing, and she's trying to, like... Hurry and climb and go through the small door. Mm-hmm. And as she's climbing, the beldam is right behind her climbing. But luckily, Coraline makes it to the door and slams it on the beldam, mm-hmm. who screams that uh, Coraline will die without her. And uh, then she, Coraline locks the door. With the help of the ghost children. Yeah, the help of the ghost children. She pull the lo- door shut and uh, break off her hand. Yeah, broke off the hand. Yeah, yeah, but Coraline didn't know that. Oh, did she not? I don't know. Maybe she did. I mean, she was looking right at it. Okay, yeah, she knew so. that. Well, she didn't know what the hand would do later, yeah. though, is what I should have said. You never really know. Yeah. You're, you're distracted Anytime by you the ghost off children. Anytime spider woman's hand. Yeah, and with three ghost children around. You don't know what's really cool. <laughs> She's 11. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, she, 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 they locked the door, the hand broke off, and Coraline was like, sweet. And the little pathway thing is like, it starts to like, because the, the it sucks Beldum, into itself. Well, the Beldum keeps trying, I think. Like, yeah. get at her. Yeah. So it's, like, just pushing further further in, so Coraline has to escape the little wormhole. Yeah. Oh, you got to yeah. get through the wormhole first. Got to. And then slam the door. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so then they back, and then the parents come home. And she runs up and hugs them, and uh, they, they scold her because she broke the snow globe. They're, they're more happy about it. They're covered it. in snow. Yeah. And, uh, and they, she cut her knee, too. And uh, despite the snow, yeah, they're covered in snow. They had no memory of where they have been. Right. Which, that so that's a, a party for them. That happens a lot in other world <laughs> yeah. situations. But they do announce that the family is going out to eat to celebrate the uh, the catalog being published yeah. that they've been working on. Big money in those catalogs. <laughs> those gardening catalogs. <laughs> I'm glad you moved your giant pile so we could record. Like, I got in and I was like, how are we going to record with all these gardening catalogs? Well, you know, I got I to gotta make some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do that with my gardening catalogs. Uh but this time, uh, Coraline's mother leaves a gift box on her bed before they go out, and inside were the gloves that she wanted Aww. in the real world. Aww. And the Coraline gives it, goes to sleep happy. Oh, this is after dinner, so yeah, she went yeah. upstairs with all the gloves. And she goes to sleep happy at last to be home. And you would hope that'd be the end, but it's but... not. She wakes up in the middle of the night and sees the cat at her window, looking a bit upset. Yeah. Like cats would if you threw them out a giant spider in an <laughs> alternate dimension. Yeah. My cat hates it when I do that. Yeah. Like, throw him at a regular spider in our world, and he's cool with it because he's like, oh, spider, I'm going to kill it. But, like, to throw him at a giant spider, Lou wouldn't, he doesn't like it. Now, I'm thinking of the two cats I have. I think Finny would be down for whatever. <laughs> Lux would not appreciate it. Yeah. I think Finny would just be like, yeah, yeah throw cool. me whatever yeah, you want. Let's do I this. I just like that you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. <laughs> yeah. Got any Mountain Dew? <laughs> Call back. Uh, but she sees the cat and she opens it and she apologizes for throwing him. And I, at the I'm bottom. sorry. And the cat forgives him and snuggles at her side. Oh, it's and then purring. she uh, she places the three eyes under her pillow, like it's some like the three eye fairy is gonna come and give her money for children's eyes. Well, yeah. Okay. That's what the three eye fairy does. <laughs> I didn't. I've only had two eyes at once. I've never gotten all the you way. Gotta to get three. that third one. Wow. Okay. That three eye fairy is awesome. Can I tell you about my idea real fast? Sure. So we've been eating out at some Mexican restaurants, and they have refried beans. Uh Uh-huh. But I say, why stop there? Let's have a three fried beans. You take those refried beans, you fry them again, and you got three fried beans. Well, now, the only thing about this is... Uh Uh-huh. You're going to have to invent the technology to be able to refry refried beans. I, I've, Once I'm working you get on that it. finished... <laughs> I'm working on it. We're solid. I feel like I could, that's a million dollar idea. Uh, at least. Yeah. It, oh, and how about this? Okay. You've heard of Tater Tots. Once or twice. Say hello to Greater Tots. Is that not a million dollar idea for advertisement? Like a place that sells Tater Tots? They can be like, the other guys have Tater Tots. And they can be like a sad little pile of Tater Tots all soggy. And they're like, but stop in every Friday through Sunday and take a gander at our greater tots. 
and it's like tater tots dancing and stuff, and it's like, yeah, it's like I've never had greater tots, but you want them now, don't you? Well, what are they? They're just tater tots that are greater. But they're okay. really good tater tots. What makes them greater? <laughs> oh, they're so good. They're they're not all sad and soggy. So is this just like a? They're gonna be really airy and like just they're gonna taste. Maybe I'll put some bacon in it. If you put bacon in something. I'm listening now. Okay, now you're like greater tots. Yeah. Sign me up. With some bacon. But it rhymes with tater. Yeah, but I got that But it's greater. Part. Yeah, I got that part. Which means it's better. Well, Domino's is kind of already doing your gimmick. Well, they're just doing tater tots. But I think you can sell it to them. Yeah, t- Domino's is who I'm making fun of when I'm like, mm, tater tots. You know, I'll have like a knockoff Domino's worker. But I'm like, saying. Farting on some tater they've tots. They've already got the ad campaign going. Yeah. You just sell your idea the of... The Greater Tots. Call them Greater Tots, right. Domino's. All right. If any of your kids out there, if your parents own Domino's, <laughs> to let us know. You know, there's a, there's a crazy story behind Domino's. Oh, really? I don't, we can't tell it here. Okay. But I have to get into that one day. Next week. Maybe. I'm going to write it down. I'm not going to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Tater Tots and three fried beans. Okay. Dude, that's... That's your whole restaurant. That's, that's it. Is that your menu? <laughs> you got two choices. <laughs> Oh no! We can well, it is served on bread plates. All of your dishes are just like <laughs> wordplay foods. <laughs> I don't hate it. Puns. I don't hate it. Hamburger puns. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> in my head. I was trying to think of the best. Oh, we gotta do it. It's kind of like Bob's Burgers, though. They, that's kind of what he does a little bit too. A little bit. A little bit. But he's a cartoon, so <laughs> he is. Who has time for cartoons? I can beat up a cartoon in a fight, so yeah. we're good. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so they forget. She, she puts the pillow. <laughs> oh yeah, we got puts the eyes under her pillow. Yeah, then got... she has a dream that the that the kids are finally free, and they thank her, but they warn her that the Beldum lives. Thank you, and will never stop looking for her. And Coraline awakes to find the eyes have been broken. She's eleven. <laughs> He's eleven. She's like, can this be over what yet? What are we doing? <laughs> what are you... f- I just moved here. What do you mean this crazy <laughs> spider witch lady is never going to stop hunting? The one that wants to sew buttons on my eyes? Cool. She's just never going to cool. leave me alone. My parents don't believe me? I'm eleven. <laughs> I'm eleven. <laughs> Oh, she wakes up and the eyes are broken. And then she has a realization that the Beldum is after the skeleton key. I thought the skeleton key was... Oh. Yeah, the triangle got the triangle. burned. Yeah. Well, they she ate a... the skeleton key, though. Yeah, but she, like, spit it up during one of their fights or something like that. Okay. She got it back. Okay. Yeah, I, I forgot to cover that. Okay. It's a little hazy. Pretty big detail. <laughs> Pretty big detail to leave out. That's a big monster ball on my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because she needs the skeleton key to come back through the door, to get the door open, right? Well, uh, Coraline has it. Oh, no, but so the, the Beldum needs it to yeah, open yeah, the door back yep, up. Yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. So she, she gets the idea she's going to go back up on that hill where the well is and drop the skeleton key down to the well. Yeah, because she's basically told you have to get rid of, you have to hide this yeah, key. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to keep it from the Beldum. So she just goes, do 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 But she doesn't realize that the Beldum's hand is actually an alive thing. Yeah. Much like the Netflix smash hit Wednesday with the little... It is that what it's called? No, thing. Uh, the thing. The thing. Just thing. <laughs> Just thing. Yeah, it, that's it, the hand that's alive. It is the is the hairy? Yeah. Thing. Okay. I always thing. get. Th- yeah. Not the thing. Yeah. That's. Who's on first? <laughs> yeah. Words so mean two things. The hands like crawling along after uh-huh. her, and uh, she uh, before she can get the well open, the hand the hand attacks Coraline. Yeah. And at the top of the hill, she's uh, is trying to stop her from getting rid of the key. But then out of nowhere, Wybie appears in his little freaky helmet. And he's there to help, but he's not much help because the hand uh, trips him off his bike. Which I was very confused about. We'll, we'll get into it. Okay, but she trips him off the bike and knocks him into the well. Yeah, which earlier he had t- I don't know if we covered this or not. But when Wybie first meets Coraline, uh-huh. he tells her that this well... Uh, I think his grandpa or somebody told him. Yeah. Somebody told him that if you uh, fell down into the well, the well is so deep that by the time you get to the bottom of it, you could see like the like the sky and the stars. Or something like that. So it's like a very it's a deep hole. It's basically like if you dig a hole, you end up like if you're in America. Boys would hole, love to go and spit down it. You end up in China. Yeah, as we used to think as children. For some reason, we didn't know. But it's, it's deep how hole. How the world worked. It's deep hole. Yeah. It's deep hole. Right. And Wybie fell down it. Almost. 
Yeah, almost. He was hanging on. He was hanging on. And then that you ruined my hand. whole surprise. <laughs> he's hanging on some roots. And, uh, right? Yeah. And he's got his hands on the outside of it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that stupid hand jabs him in one of his hands. Yeah, trying to get him the, 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 the fall. Yeah. But slowly he's able to, to climb out of it. And when he climbs out, he drops a large rock on the hand. Yeah, because Coraline fights the hand before yeah. it can stab his other. Before yeah. it can stab Wyvern. They're, they're his other fighting hand. it together. Yeah. And then when he drops the rock on, he breaks the hand. Mm hmm. And, uh, but the hand's still trying to fight back even after this. Yeah. So they take the rock, the hand, and they tie it all into a shawl. Yeah, with the shawl. She has like a little, yeah, she has that that she, yeah, is trying to hold it down with. And, uh, and they, they tie it all to the rock. With and the then, skeleton key. Yeah, with the skeleton key, and they drop it down the well. Which I wouldn't drop the key yeah. with the hand, because I feel like the hand could just bloop, 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 climb right up. we're talking magic worlds here. Yeah. So the hand could probably, like, reconnect. No matter how deep it is. Yeah, I would think so. And out. Yeah. But as far she's eleven, <laughs> she's eleven. But this was two thousand two, and as of now, nothing spooky has gone on that we know of. That we know of, yeah, yeah. And the pink palace and everything just went back. Pink palace, the pink, yeah, pink palace. Pink palace, pink palace apartments went back to normal, and everybody I lived think, happily uh, ever after. Her parents had like pretty good success. With yeah, the, they had a garden party. Yeah, they had a garden party. And the party, the, some the food. grandma came over. Wybie's grandma came over. Yeah, you know, it was like an episode of the Wonder Years. Now, my question was Wybie. Yes. So, in the other world, we are to believe <laughs> that the Beldum killed Wybie? Or, like, did the thing that it does because it sewed eyes? Yeah. Well, not one y- on w- Wybie. But he was also only made of sand. Okay, so, so it maybe wasn't... he was just something that the other mother made up. So she never actually got Wybie in there. Yeah, Wybie was never oh, actually okay. in there. The other mother made her because she knew that Coraline knew him. Okay. And would like it better if he couldn't talk. Because he was a little annoying at first, you know. That makes more sense then. I mean, Coraline's kind of a, she, you know, she's a bit of a loner. And uh-huh. Wybie's a lot. Yeah. As someone who is a whole bunch, <laughs> yeah. I recognize that Wybie is a lot. Game recognized game. <laughs> game recognized game! <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> that was Bang, too late. Boom. So we need to do this. Blow it oh. up and then high five! Oh. Oh, let's do it. Let's do a good one. Boom, boom, boom! Yes! And I'm then we got so a, many graphics then, in there. And then one of these. Oh, what are we doing, man? <laughs> one more. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh. no. Boom, oh. Yeah. Yeah! Oh, oh, I'm going. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done. We're the worst. We had three tries and we couldn't get uh, that. We had like seven <laughs> tries, I <laughs> we think. We had so many! But oh. that, was, uh, that was a real crime. Yeah. And you might. The name of the movie. If you didn't catch it, it was Coraline. Oh, which has been one of Lily's favorite movies for a good three, four years. It's a really good movie. She uh, now it's on HBO Max, yeah. soon to be just Max. That's where I just watched it. But you can also watch it on YouTube for free. Okay, that's where we watched it a bunch of times. All right, and yeah, it's really a, good. It's, yeah, it's a really cool movie. Stop animation. No, I'm not saying to stop animation. I'm saying that's the... Or what's <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, you're good. Is it called stop, stop animation? animation? Yeah. That's so confusing. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm a fan of animation. Yeah, it's based on a Neil Gaiman book. Yep. Uh, and I read where YB's not really a character in the book, but right, they just they wanted somebody, YB. yeah. Yeah. Someone Caroline's own... Coraline. See, I keep saying Caroline like I'm the Bobinski. Hey, Caroline. It's Coraline. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. But yeah, that was uh no, we only said one cuss word. Good work. We <laughs> We There's there's no you or I we're us, buddy. We're a we. We 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 I <laughs> I said a cuss word. Stuck you to, didn't stop me. Stuck to family show. <laughs> you did rules. man I'm a professional. <laughs> you are you, however. <laughs> amateur. This is amateur hour. <laughs> Thanks for putting me in my place. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. It's a good lesson to learn. Though. It is, yeah. Speaking of lessons, what did you take away from this movie as a lesson? Um, You know, like, it's not always, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Mm-hmm. You know, like, instead of just trying to, like, look for an easy way out, like the other mother or other father, like, look, work on your relationship with your mother and your father. Yeah. They're busy, but, like, why are they busy? And get watch, down to the to to the real meat of it. Watching this movie, like you know, uh, I will say the mom did not always uh, probably communicate with Coraline in the best way. Yeah. But it's a like you were saying earlier, like new house, 
They're trying to make things work. Yeah, they're moving uh, right in front, right in the middle of this deadline for this gardening catalog. Dad seems to be a bit more like wants to be the good guy. Yeah. Uh, so mom's probably got more pressure on her there. Uh, so like, mom didn't really handle things well, but like for Coraline, yeah, this was a good like this. This is a good movie about like, hey, appreciate the things you've got. And it's time to grow up a little. Appreciate bit. your life, <laughs> and like you know, you'll you'll know one day when you're older. Yep. That. Like, life's uh, hard. Wait till you're older. Yeah. So, you know, uh, your parents are probably trying the best. Yep. Um, and communication's awesome. Yep. Uh, it's the best thing you can... It's key. It's communication is key. It's, it's the, the skeleton, skeleton key. key. And that was open the passage. Dude. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did it. Yes! Man! Well, wow, communication is the key that opens the portal between the two worlds of parents and adults. Wait. Parents and kids! Man, <laughs> we were like those burlesque dancers where we unzipped, and we had it, and then you kept going. I hey, know! That's what I do! I just keep going! I can't stop! Yeah. <laughs> I'm riding that, 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 that wave! Riding the wave! Oh, we... And it just crashed down! We, we, we had the best ending. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the one that earlier said that they should have known when to... Yeah. So... Now we gotta keep going. All right. So, uh, so, man, that was such a cool moment. <laughs> we so, can stop it. So this was, this, no, let's keep. Going. This was like a very uh, uh, had very creepy moments. Yeah. Uh, for like I would I don't like this PG is the movie PG thirteen. I don't know. Um, does it tell me what this was rated on here? Uh, right. It does not. Um, I know. But it does have its its creepy moments. Um. I would say... PG. It's PG. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like, when I was a really little kid, uh, I was watching Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday mm-hmm. the 13th, uh, Halloween. Like, yeah. I watched all, like, that early horror stuff. So this probably wouldn't have been anything to me. But I think if you didn't watch those kind of horror movies, as a kid, this is... It definitely, yeah. It's, this has some moments where... Mm, buttons over eyes. That's a little creepy just on its own. The, the intro to this movie, the title yeah. sequence, is... Beautiful. One of the best title sequences I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah, the robots, like, or whatever it is. It was awesome. The eyes, making the doll and everything. Yeah, it yeah. was great. <clears throat> when I was a kid, the movie, biggest movie that stood out to me was probably Stand By Me. And I watched all your stuff, too. You know, but I just All the movies Stand- I made yeah. when you were a kid. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the movies you talked about. The <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Stand By Me was, like, a big movie in my childhood. What about, like, was there an animated movie that... Or were you like stop? I like the or were you like stop animation? <laughs> stop animation! Yeah, as a kid, I was the most annoying kid. I don't yeah. have time for cartoons. I would watch like the Transformer movie and the GI Joe movie. But, hey, GI Joe movie was awesome. Yeah, was I've cool. never been a Transformers fan. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was. I did love the GI Joe movie. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, 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 and then. Yeah. Uh, Serpent, well, well that's a podcast. Just, I was just saying one thing. Just, and just going, yeah. Well, we should do a podcast yeah. where, like, you say the name of a G.I. Joe, and I'm yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. And then I'll say one. <laughs> yeah. Roadblock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 Cobra Commander. He wasn't a G.I. Joe, but uh, yeah. He was a G.I. Joe boy. Yeah. 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 Duke. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember if you were putting me on the spot. Scarlet. Scarlet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Black Ninja. Was, uh... Snake Eyes. Oh, yeah. Uh. Snake Eyes. Okay, we don't got to do that. All right, thanks for listening. This has been a fun <laughs> episode. That was a real crime. Uh, we'll be back soon. We'll be back soon. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back to our... We didn't do an ad break this time. The, hey, man, this is for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. I want <laughs> <laughs> bait double! Yeah, I'm not... <laughs> I think if we did an ad break for this and it was targeted towards kids... Yeah. I th- there may be child labor oh, issues there. I think maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we'll just do this one for but the kids. Better safe to be sorry. Sure. Better, better, yeah, better, better safe be safe. Than, better be sa- better safe than sorry. Bye, kids. Bye.